Welcome back to another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. review. Today I'm taking a look at Season 7, Episode... You know, in all honesty, I've kind of lost count of... Is this Episode 5? That sounds right. I'll call it Episode 5. Um, season 7, Episode 5. The trout, the trout in the Milk. Um, another... Let's not talk about the episode for a moment and just talk about the, uh, the title of the episode. Again, this is a name... Uh, this is a name that actually makes more sense uh some one off line from the episode it's depending on the context because you know they they they're now in the night going wrong because the timeline keeps getting changed so sue's little thing that's going wrong the trout in the milk which i guess is an old 40 saying so you know that that makes sense that you know, that that is the name of the episode the names of the episodes this season have not been that one it you know it was just it was just come your onions that was the only one that was off and a little weird. It's like, so now it's but now it's become a running tangent of this review. So yeah, so this, like I said, anything that could go wrong is going at this point because they start off in 1970 and 76 and of the show going back to and just throwing everything at you from history because I think we have Patrick Warburg, the general Shield general, whose name I still cannot. Um, which is amazing because he he was on the show previously, but only as a little hologram guy. That was it. I mean, he I mean he technically wasn't even a character. He was a video presentation recorded in the 1970s that our agents found in 2017 or something like that. So the fact that they brought him back <laughs> after. After that small little bit, because that because th this time around it was telegraphed that Patrick Warburton was going to be back. It's like, hey, look, it's Patrick Warburton. He's great. Everyone loves him. He's back. And uh, th this time it was telegraphed. Last time it was not. Last time you're just going you're, you're going through watching the episode. The Agents of Shield have showed shown up back in the uh, you know they're back to the present from their little trip into the future, and then uh, and then. They're investigating the lighthouse before it got taken over by the Kree and everything in the future. And then, you know, they start up this video presentation, and she's like, Wait, is that Patrick Warburton in a fake mustache? What? <laughs> so, he's actually he's actually here, and he's actually interacting with our characters this time around, which is really cool. Um, I don't think we've seen the last of him. I, I think he's going to be in the next episode as well, the same way um, that they had Patton Oswalt on for two episodes, the same way that they've had Sousa on for multiple episodes now. Um, of course, at the time, it's like, oh, okay, so yeah, he's going to be like Patton Oswalt. They'll have, they'll have him for two episodes, and then we'll move on. But no, it seems like they've gotten him for the rest of the season at this point, which is cool. Uh, and if not for the rest of the season, he's staying on for like four or five episodes, which is cool. So, um, yeah, so they went... It's It, it was it was really interesting that... You know, they, so they brought back Patrick Warburton... And then they also brought back characters that I didn't think we'd see again. But, I mean, I don't know why I didn't think that because it would make sense. And it was it was a moment where I should have seen it coming because it made sense. But then I gasped anyway because I recognized the actor. But then young Gideon Malik showed up. It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. It's young Gideon Malik. Ah! That was... <laughs> And then they had the little, and again, Bear McCurry's little Hydra theme playing in the background. And then, you know, and his brother was still there. So his brother didn't get sent to Maveth, which is interesting. So I wonder who got sent in his place to be Hive's, uh, to be Hive's um, sacrifice this time around. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see what, to see what change, to what has changed. Because now the Chronicons are just throwing, at, you know, they're, they're just messing with everything. They're throwing the whole time stream in, in out of whack. Um, it was interesting because when they were in, it was funny when they were in the club, <laughs> and then and then Patrick Warburton brought up uh, Freddie Malik, and they're like, "Oh wait, he was supposed to have died three years ago. So what's he doing here? The Chronicoms are helping him live." And then they st and so was like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to announce, you know, our new project. You know, we want to get it up and running as soon as possible. You know, we're going to stop terrorist threats before they happen with pinpoint laser accuracy from a satellite, blah, blah, blah. And I'm starting to think, and I'm saying, I'm kind of starting to think to myself, this is sounding kind of like Project Insight. 
the, this is sounded like Project Insight. And he's like, I'm proud to announce Project Insight. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're doing Project Insight like 40 years too early. What? So that's that was a great that was a great little twist there. It's like oh the Chronicoms are are pushing Project Insight way forward, and then and then then that kind of got my hopes up there because I thought then we were going to see Arnim Zola. Yeah, you know, if, if they help if they helped um, Freddie Malik, Frederick Malik live longer, then maybe the Chronicoms had helped, had uh, you know helped Zola live longer as well but alas no zola in this episode they even you know when daisy and when daisy and uh and susa walked into the back room of the of the of the club of the swordfish club and and you know there's that computer and i saw all the computers i i just heard zola in my head go you are standing in my brain it's like from winter soldier I'm like oh what if we see zola what if we see zola they got him they got him for agent carter what if they get him back for shield that would be amazing but I, I don't know. If they had gotten him, I mean, considering it's Toby Jones and he's a big name actor and everything, I feel like they probably would have telegraphed that in the press. They would have said that, you know, the way they got Patrick Warburton back. It's like, hey, Toby Jones is joining the season. Yeah, the guy that played, whose name I cannot remember, I'm sorry. You know, Daniel Sousa is joining this season of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, all, the, all these people being in, all these actors being in S.H.I.E.L.D. Pat, Patton Oswald is back. I feel like that they would have mentioned Toby Jones, unless, you know, you know, trying to keep it a secret, because spoilers and stuff, I mean, eh, who, who knows, maybe he'll show up in the next episode, maybe he was at the lighthouse, and then and he'll show up in the next episode to help with interrogating May and Coulson or something, because, yeah, May and Coulson, yeah, that, they're, they've had to play along right with the Chronicom's plans, and now S.H.I.E.L.D. is exposed in 1976 to, well, S.H.I.E.L.D., of course, you know, th this time this is a shield that has Hydra in it, so, um, you know, the, Hy the Hydra bosses are going to be manipulating the shield folk and going, ooh, you know, these are terrorists, we need to take care of them, and it's like, even though we really know that they're, you know, they're shield from the future trying to stop us, so, that was, that, that was an interesting... That, that was maybe my one gripe of the episode in terms of editing, is that Yo-Yo grabs the manila folder from Malik's dead body, which I, I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and then she looks at the picture, and it's like, who, you know, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And then, and then that's the that's the last we see of Deke and Yo-Yo for the episode. Then it cuts to Mac and all the others, and then and then it's Mac who says, who's looking on the security cameras, and says, "Oh no, they have my parents." I, I'm guessing that, you know, it was Mac's parents who were on the picture in the envelope. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I even need to guess. I think we can figure out that, that, yeah, that is who was on the, who was the, on the picture, who was in the picture that was in the envelope. But it's weird that you have that reaction from Yo-Yo and then you don't cut back to that again. Because you would think that Mac would say they have my parents, and then it cuts to Yo Yo holding it, and then you know, you see the same, and then and then you see a picture of them in the crowd, and that because we didn't even get a good look at them, so that that we didn't even get a good you know it's not there, and I get I guess we haven't met Mac's parents before, so it wouldn't be a ooh recognize who this is. It's not like that you know they would have a kid, and it's not like that yeah. All of a sudden, John Slattery would be there, and it's like, oh, they have they have Howard Stark captured. We can, you know, that would mess up the timeline even more. You know, and oh, and he's got a kid with him. It's young Tony Stark. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's so it's not like it could have been a that big of a moment where we would have recognized the person. But still, you know, you would we would need to. I feel like that moment could have been done better, where we needed to see. Um, the security footage and then it needed to cut back to yo-yo and we see that the same people that were on the security cam footage were the people in the picture because other, otherwise that was it just what that wasn't done too well but i suppose with the pacing of the episode they didn't maybe have time maybe they did film that but then they didn't have time um i i don't know maybe and then maybe that picture will pop up next episode and then we'll and then we'll get a better look at the people that were in the security cam footage in a better and a actual look at the photo because they will have because i honestly based on the security cam footage i don't know if they even hired actual actors to portray max parents or if those were just extras that because because 
that's literally all Max parents ha- have on the, you know, it's like, then there's the throwaway line next episode where, oh yeah, Hydra didn't need him anymore. So they let him go. And then, and then, and that's all. So they don't, they didn't even bother casting and uh, more actors. And that's why. So they just had a couple extras or a couple crew dress up in costumes or something. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that could have been done better. That was, that's my one gripe from the episode, but, um, Overall, this episode was full of twists and turns. That was really fun to watch. Um, Deke just straight up murdered um, Wil- Wilfred Malik, which is honestly hilarious because because during the commercial breaks we were get hit, hitting the button to fast forward and stuff, and it and you know we were discussing you know, where the agents could go from here. And I said something along the lines of, "Well, at this point they're 1976, so Wilfred Malik survived six years longer than he needed to. They just need to pick him. They just need to grab him and throw him off a cliff to reset the timeline because he should have been dead six years ago." <laughs> so, and so the Deke, you know, uh, Wilfred Malik's in the middle of monologuing, and Deke just shoots him. It's like the Chronicom see every bang, 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 <laughs> and it's, it falls over in his chair. PG-13 blood gets on his shirt, and he's like, ah, oh, did they see that coming? And Yo-Yo looks at him like, what the heck, dude? And he's like, well, I mean, he, you know, he's lit, you know, he's had six extra years. I guess this is just, you know, setting the timeline right. I'm like, ah, that's what I said! <laughs> so, so I, I find it funny that, the, that, that that's exactly what happened. But, and this is going to get into something else, but since the Chronicoms have been helping, obviously helped Malik survive longer than he was supposed to, is he going to show up in the next episode with his body having healed itself because he's now enhanced with Chronicom abilities or something like that to where so to so where maybe we haven't seen the last of him you know he maybe he temporarily is dead but then his body heals itself it's got a re, it's got regenerative proper, properties now and then and then he's up and walking around again in the next episode we'll find out so that then that brings me to Simmons who is having some neck pains with a little red glowing thing in the back of her neck so I think I said this last episode. If I didn't say it last episode, I I said it maybe the time before. I said it in I said it in recent recently. It wasn't the first or second week. It was it was in one of the more recent episode reviews. But I did say that I was kind of thinking that maybe there was something going on with Simmons about the whole oh it's been it's been considerable time. It's been a long time. Don't know where Fitz is. And I and I think I I'm pretty sure I said. That I'm thinking that you know Simmons, quote unquote, died a long time ago, and then and then and then her brain got uploaded into a Chronicom L and D body, the way Coulson's did, and so then Simmons is now like 200 and something years old, and so then, but so I I, I don't know, maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe there's something going wrong with her Chronicom body, and 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 so she's starting to deteriorate a little bit, and we're gonna have a moment where she says, "I'm 203 years old" or something like that. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe she and Fitz, you know, had a had a long, happy life together, and then now that they and now they they've both died, and they've had their brains uploaded into Chronicom bodies, or something like that. So, uh, who 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 knows? Who knows? But I, they, you know, they're planting seeds. They're planting seeds for something that's probably going to happen in the next episode or the next couple episodes. So we'll see where that is going to go. But um, right, right now it's looking like I called it. So yeah, um, let's see here. Is there anything really to wrap this up? Um, I can't remember his name. It's Henry or something like that. But Henry Malik, the other brother that has not been hived um, because he did not go to Maveth like he was supposed to in the original timeline. You know, he's still around. He's he's up to something. He's up to something. I'm wondering if he's going to turn into a good guy, maybe. Or if he's going to be like a third party antagonist that wants to get away from Hydra and everything, but he wants powers for himself because he calls up the shield prison prison where Whitehall is, where Daniel Whitehall is. And uh, yeah, and th- again, this is another this is another thing where they're going all the way back to, you know, to er- earlier stuff in the series. They're going back to season two where, you know, Whitehall had that. Had, you know, figured out how to, you know, take powers 
from individuals, and you know he butchered Scott. You know, at the time, he, yeah, <laughs> this is <laughs> that's why I was about to say that is because you know this is what that's what her name was at the time. Because you know, at the time, you know, we knew her just as Sky. Uh, you know, he butchered Sky's mom, and uh, of course, she turned out to be a little crazy anyway. But um, and uh, and you know, and managed to make himself younger. So uh, this is obviously before that happened. I'm pretty sure, but. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if we actually see him next episode because that that actor has popped up a couple times in flashbacks since his death in season two, the character's death in season two. He's popped up here and there in flashbacks or um, was he in the framework? I can't remember if he was in the framework or not. He may have been in the framework, but he definitely showed up in um, season five in, a, in that in that flashback with uh, Ruby's mom when she was when she was younger um and you know being trained by hydra at that secret hydra base so was that season five was that that long ago yeah that was that long ago wow this show <laughs> yeah so yeah uh yeah he did he showed up there because that was a surprise that was like oh hey it's it's whitehall that's that's a surprise I hadn't seen him in a while but uh yeah so what so what's so what's Malik Malik brother number two going to be getting up to? That's that is the question because the since he didn't get sent to Bavith, you know we don't know at all what his timeline is supposed to look like from here. You know he's a he's a wild card at this point. You know going back to the first episodes that we're talking about ripples, not tidal waves. You know we're we're far beyond ripples in the time stream at this point. We're we're in full tidal wave mode. You know we're having to put sandbags on the beach and everything because the flood waters are rising. You know it's not it's not looking good. There's there's a storm coming, and uh, you know there you know things are going to get worse before they get better. Obviously, because you know that's how Agents of Shield works. <laughs> things always get really really bad, and then the agents manage to save the day at the last minute. Yeah, it's it. You know, it's a superhero. It's a superhero show in 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 essence. So I mean, yeah, it, of course that's how it's going to be. But yeah, I I am very intrigued to see where we go from here. Um. So I I guess the last thing I'll touch on is Sousa. Um, he said, he said in this episode that maybe this needs to be my last stop because he doesn't like the way that the future is getting altered and stuff, and the fact that our agents, you know, are not in control of where or when they jump. They're just following in the Chronicom's wake. Um, and they seem to be making things worse as things go on. Um, it seems like maybe by the end of the episode, he's come around a little bit after Daisy wows him with her, with her cell phone. But, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious if he's gonna actually stick around for more episodes than just the next one. I don't know. He may, he may actually decide to depart um I, I i don't know i guess we'll we'll find out i mean he he's such a wild card at this point because i figured we'd only have him for two episodes and now he's saying he you know now it looks like he's going to stick around but then you know the care i mean this, this could just be part of the character progression of him not you know trying to figure out where he belongs now that he's been plucked out of time um and so and so maybe he just wants to jump forward the 20 years or whatever to the 70s and, and stay there because it's going to be a little bit more but at the same time, you know, he can't make people thought he died 20 years ago. So that, you know, all this, he can't go back to work. You know, you'd have to have a new name, stuff like that. So it, it's, he's a wild card. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with Sousa um, in the next couple episodes. If he does stick around for the next couple episodes, it isn't just in the next one. Um, so, yeah, um, I don't really think I have too much else to say. Um I think that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I enjoyed this episode. I'm really looking forward to next week, and I'll see you guys then. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.